everyone i hope you all are doing great everything is very well with you even though it's like covid situation people are really frustrated well in this situation what i wanted to do i wanted to create a series on digital ocean on how you go ahead and create your uh, servers cr manage your databases and so on so this series is for new people new people getting introduced to the concept of or cloud computing or digital ocean in general this is not a series for someone who is already pro in digital ocean or cloud computing area digital ocean is american cloud infrastructure um, provider they are based in new york and the ceo is yncl and something called spriel if i'm spelling um, I'm, if i'm pronouncing that right um a digital ocean allows you to create servers add load balances to your servers and then have databases for you to manage and create you can go from a very simple application to a bit complicated application in digital ocean and in my perspective the main reason why digital ocean is so widely used is because it's so damn simple it's not as complicated as AWS because I'm not, I don't know if you have ever worked with AWS, but if you have, then you can understand the pain of working with some of the services. It's not really that straightforward. If you want to create a server, you need to have some information about how you go ahead and put all the services together and make a service work for you. So in this series, I wanted to just drill down on DigitalOcean services and show you how these are the things working together and how you can just go ahead and add a domain to your web service, how you can take a leverage, uh, how you can take advantage of the marketplace they have pr introduced and how you can go ahead and use some of the coupons which is available so you can get your first step into it. So beginning you go to digitalocean.com if you don't already have an account um, you might go to the description of this video you would find a link uh, if you go through the link and sign up then you would probably get a coupon for like a hundred dollar which you can use for i don't know a long range of time depending on what server you use so the pricing structure of DigitalOcean is very simple. If you want to create a server, which in DigitalOcean is referred as dig, uh, Droplet, a Droplet, just just think of Droplet as a uh, um, server. It's, it's a server. It's a virtual machine that runs on uh, virtual hardware stuff. And it makes a virtual machine which lets you ho have a server. So j just Droplet is just a server, uh, as simple as that. So if you have an account, you sign in. If you don't have an account, go to the description of the video and you will find a link. Through that link, if you sign up, you get a $100 coupon. And uh, if when you sign up or sign in, you get to see a dashboard which might look something like this. I, I don't know what time uh, you're watching this video. It might be like four years down the line. Uh, in that moment, it might have changed some of the UI stuff. But in general, as of today, it looks like this. On the left side, you have all your navigations to take you through some pages which lets you create some uh, or interact with some functionalities of DigitalOcean. On top right side, you can uh, go into your My Account and then in your account, you have billing sections and some of the settings you can deal with. So when you are creating a new web so website, the typical thing which you would need is a domain and a hosting. So I already have a domain in my GoDaddy account, which I would just go ahead and put in. So what I would do is, uh, uh, my name is Sharik. Um, I, I forgot even uh, if I, I don't know if I have introduced myself, but my name is Sharik Sheikh. I'm a software developer working for a company over here. I, I'm based in uh, Mumbai, India. And I created uh, a domain for my name. It's called sharik.dev, S-H-A-R-I-K dot dev. Just wanted to try things out. And uh, what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to go ahead and take the domain, link it with DigitalOcean, and let DigitalOcean host my server so that whenever somebody goes to sharik.dev, they can go ahead and see that, uh, okay, what is it? uh special about this guy or i don't know what this guy is uh what this guy does for a living so when you have a domain from let's say GoDaddy, 
you would get uh, you would you would log into your GoDaddy account then go to domains and click on the domain you want to link in my case I want to link this sharik.dev domain with my DigitalOcean droplet so I go to that domain I go to the very bottom of this and also this is not just limited to GoDaddy you can buy domain from anywhere you like Namecheap or Google domains anywhere you like you the process of what I'm about to show you would be very similar only the location of the elements will be in different areas obviously depending on what UI designs they are using for their services but in GoDaddy or in the example of GoDaddy we have domain and inside domains you get your list of all your domain you click on the domain you want and then you scroll down you see manage DNS you go down there and in manage DNS you would see uh, some records entries and uh, things like that so don't be bothered about these records for now just go to some uh, a section called name servers in the section you would click on change and then in the uh, fields you will put in something called name servers a uh, name server is just think of this as a address to where y this domain um, is going to like which hosting it is going to point toward so in our case the um, hosting it will be pointing toward is going to be digital ocean so that the digital ocean can have some record building functionality or some functionality which is available for the domain and in inside digital ocean so what you can do is you can google digital ocean um, name servers and most likely you will get your first result right somewhere around here so what you would see over here a digital ocean will give you three records which you have to enter the records will look like this ns1.digitalocean.com ns2.digitalocean.com ns3.digitalocean.com you take all of those you p put ns1 ns2 add name server ns3 and so on over here what that will do that will redirect um, let's say uh, some things toward digital ocean so this domain is no now gonna be pointing toward digital ocean in many situation updating a name server will take a bit of time it's not really that you save it and boom it's working it doesn't work like that it might take I don't know at max 24 hours but in most of the cases I have seen it's it's like uh, get, it gets reflected in about one or two hours so you might have to wait for that one and uh, yeah not sure why it is coming up as domain dot well anyway so the my name servers are listed over here now what I'm gonna do is in my manage section there is a section for networking right over here you go to networking and over here you will put in the domain you want to add so uh, just to go away from this uh, in the project section you would see something like s.gini.us or sharik.in uh, basically the idea is you can cluster or you can group the servers together or the functionality together so that you can have one group for one project now if you are a guy who is mul working on multiple projects at the same time if you have many things you are doing at the same time multitasking multitasking god who knows what so it would it would not be a good idea to put everything every droplets every settings inside one area what you would do you would group them together so for example if i have if i have a website abc.com it would be a good idea to group them under abc.com so that my servers my setting for the networking area or if i'm using something some other service from DigitalOcean, then all of that stuff would live inside that group so that way you when you go to a group called abc.com you can feel free that it's not going to change anything in the xyz.com however it's a good idea to be a bit cautious about it so this is what you see over here the projects which i have so uh, at the moment uh, it's not really a big deal uh, let's just say i create a dummy project i'm gonna say i don't know it is 
for uh, testing. And let's just say the purpose. Uh, the purpose of this is to, let's just say in my case, is create project educational purpose. I'm going to create it and immediately you see over here that the dummy is listed inside projects. Now, um, we will skip for that one over here. Now you get to see that I can do all of this for this particular group. So what we wanted to do, we wanted to have my domain inside of DigitalOcean. So let's go to manage again, networking again. We go to uh, domains. By default, that should be domain. But if it's not, you can select domains over here. And then you can put in the domain that you want to DigitalOcean to handle. So in my case, that was sharik.dev. I want dummy project to host that networking section uh, of domain. I go ahead and add the domain. And now if I go to my uh, dummy section, you can see in the domains, I have domains over here. So this is grouping, just allowing you to probably, you know, um, have things work together. So um, if I click on sharik.dev, now it's asking me about some uh, records. So in this situation, what's happening is uh, think of domain uh, as lost in this situation. The domain doesn't know where to go or where the information uh, should be, uh, where the information lives, which he, the, the domain can grab and show to the person who is visiting our domain. So in that situation, we need to create a map. But right now, we do not have any droplet or server. So let's create a simple droplet, which we will connect with my domain. And let's see how that goes. So I go to droplet over here, or I can just uh, go ahead and click on create and droplet. It's the same thing. Um, I go there and I'm going to go ahead and choose which distribution or an image I'm going to need. So uh, if you are a developer, then you would probably know which of these distributions is the one you should be using. But if you are not a developer, you're just a regular person, uh, then in that case, you would just go to Marketplace. Marketplace is a collection of many different types of images, something like WordPress. WordPress is so uh, widely used and uh, most of the things that is provided in WordPress is something that a non-developer can do by himself or herself. It's not required that you have a programming knowledge or things like that. So in those situations, the marketplace images would help you to a great extent to remove all the learning curve which you need for setting up a server on your by yourself. So in this situation, I'm going to choose WordPress. So over here, you get to see um, what the pricing, monthly pricing, there is going to be. So in this case, you can say uh, if you add a managed SQL database to your WordPress, the pricing for the hosting plus there will be pricing for my SQL database. So in my case, I don't think I need require a managed database service. So basically what managed database service means is this is something that's uh, uh, like when you create a server inside of your server, you can create a database. So you don't pay anything extra for that. It just as simple as you create a service and then you add a database feature inside of it and use that to host your um, database inside of it. You don't pay anything extra for that. What this is going to do, a managed database is going to take out your database from your service and put it outside of your database. Uh, sorry, you outside of your um, droplet. So your droplet is separated from your database. The, 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 the best uh, approach is to use um, whatever is your current situation is depending on that you decide um, is it really necessary for you to have a database outside of your droplet. 
Um, in many of the cases, if you have a very small website, you don't have any thing that you want to grow in the future you don't you don't really have plans about scaling up to like very high level where like there are thousands of people are using it in that situation what you can do is you can go ahead and um, use your droplet to host your database your database will not cost you anything extra for sure it will use some of the resources that you have for your droplet but it will not cost you anything extra other than what you're already paying for your droplet fees so once you have your decision whether you want to go with the database inside your server or you want to go with the database outside of your server so if you gonna if you want to go uh, with the database which is outside of your server in that situation of course you would have to pay for the database which you are using outside of the server uh, something like fifteen dollars a month and things like that so th there are more things uh, which can differentiate between a database living inside a server and a database living outside a server But in this video, I guess it would be like too much technical details It's, it's I guess it's already been too much uh, details provided to you So we'll just skip over it and we will go to the choose plan section Now uh, if you are just starting out uh, if you just have a new uh, you know web service you are building web website you're building it just uh, like a normal blog there is nothing complicated about it I usually find it's a good idea to go for like a 10 or 12 dollar plan because this is um, in my perspective it just doesn't need you to worry about if the traffic is going to be low or something like that because what i have seen people do is they go for the minimum uh, amount which is in this case is six dollars in this situation it's good uh, it, they are saving six dollars every month on on this one but they need to constantly monitor their services and ensure that the traffic which they are getting is inside the limitations of what the hardware can provide if it is going outside or if your users having hard time accessing your website in that situation you would need to resize your cluster uh, or not your cluster but your your droplet and go to a higher plan in this case if you have chosen six dollar then you would go for twelve dollar so you need that extra time uh, always to ensure that what you are doing is inside the limitation of your hardware um, or of, of the droplet hardware so in my perspective that's too much things to worry about what you do is you go for something like a twelve dollar plan and that takes out some of the headaches of you constantly monitoring your droplet to see if it is performing well if people are using it uh, you know within the range and stuff like that so i would go for twelve dollar but you can choose any plan which fits your need then we have uh, a block storage so think of block storage as um, uh, to give you an example let's say you have a computer in the computer you can store 10,000 songs now um, if you have songs below 10,000 it's a good idea to use your computer and not anything uh, add and not add, add anything extra into your your computer but imagine that something happens a new album comes out and for some reason uh, maybe you're selling songs and for uh, for for like tomorrow you find 5000 new songs your server already has 10000 and the capacity of your server is to hold 10000 songs it's not going to go ahead and let you store 5000 more because that's outside of its capacity what you do is you use something called block storage Block storage is you adding extra storage to your computer so those extra 5,000, 2,000 or 10,000 songs can be stored together your already existing 10,000 songs. That resolves the problem of you having issues with your storage. So for a new website, for something as simple as a blog website, I don't usually see the need for a block storage. So in this situation, we will just go ahead and, you know, skip over it then comes our data center region it is generally a good idea to choose a region which is closest to the consumer so for example i am a um, blogger and the people reading my blog is usually located in mm, let's say delhi delhi india so in that situation it would be a bad idea to choose a new york server because the physical distance between these are huge um, the internet 
might give me some latency issues which just basically mean a little bit of delay in transferring of information from the destination uh, uh, to, to the where uh, like the place where the journey began so you would choose a data center which is closest to your consumer so the information travel between the distances is as low as possible so if i am creating a server uh, or, or blog for people for like uh, people like in Delhi India then in that situation it would be a good idea to choose Bangalore or maybe Singapore uh, if for some reason I don't like Bangalore so you can choose one of these databases and that should just work out well for you uh, you don't need to worry about VPC for now uh, none of these things if you want to monitor how things are going on and have some alert functionality then you can go with that but in my perspective it, it, it generally you will need that one then comes the um, SSH key section the SSH uh, if you are a developer then you would know it basically uh, what SSH is is uh, it's like a key to your 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 server door so if you want to enter inside your server you need this key to validate who you are so for that one you go ahead and you create an SSH key but if you are new and you, you don't know what an SSH key is you don't know how to generate it you, it's a good idea to go with a password okay then you go ahead and define a password for you so you would just go ahead and um, I don't know use something that's really convenient in my case I'll, I'll just use uh, I don't know something that's very generic for me to remember I maybe so I'm just choosing like password one two three four five six and maybe an at sign so that it can act as it's a safe password then I'm gonna go ahead and give it a name so this is a name for your server a host name for your server what you can do is you can use words without spaces or numbers most likely without spaces so in my case whatever it has it's it's fine for me and you can create many droplets or one single droplet so in our case it's very simple book we don't need many droplets and stuff uh, the tags I would help you um, filter down to some of the um, functionality which is required for you so I'm just gonna say block tag so whenever there is something related to bog I search it and I should be able to find it at last we have uh, select project so in which project I want this to go in so in this situation I want this to go in inside dummy so let's let go let, let it go in dummy and then you have enable backup Enable backup, think of this as a uh, fail safe, safe system, sort of like that. What this is supposed to do, as it, I guess it's pretty much uh, self explanatory, it just takes like snapshots of your backup, uh, not your backup, but your droplet, and it saves it and ensures that anything goes wrong, you can use that backup to have almost everything um you know where you are that is usually like a 20 percent of the droplet price so in my case if the droplet price is let's say uh 12 dollars then in that situation it's gonna be 240 and something like that so uh, i do not personally need a backup um you m it would be a good idea to have a backup so y you might go ahead and use that one for now let me just use something so that it lets me proceed you may not be able to send an email containing the droplet details or password please store your password securely okay where is the issue now Okay, so maybe that is the issue. Cannot end in a number or a special character. Okay. Must contain one uppercase. First and last name don't count in. 
Okay. Wow, it's giving me a really hard time though. Let's do that. Okay. Create project. Uh, droplet. I'm gonna name it for my Google to remember it because I'm horrible in remembering any stuff. So the droplet is gonna be taking like a minute for you a uh, minute for it to create it the droplet should be like um like like uh, like a very plain stuff I, it depends on how what you chose in the image section if you chose just ubuntu then it's just gonna be a very uh, generic uh platform uh for you like a server for you but if you chose something like a mar uh, wordpress image from a marketplace then it's gonna have everything that a wordpress is re required like the uh, every software has its own requirement it needs certain certain plugins to be installed certain application to be installed in your server in order for it to work so the image that we chosen that was a wordpress image meaning a wordpress image will contain everything that is required by wordpress for it to successfully run so as you can see as soon as your droplet droplet is created you you would be able to see an ip address over here which is the address of where your droplet is hosted or your server is hosted or your content is hosted you can give it any name you want then let's go back to our domain and if you remember we needed our domain to know on what server it needs to communicate with so a uh, at sign is generally referred to the host name a host name in my case is sharik.dev if you have a domain called example.com then example.com is your host name okay. so we use at over here and then over here you need to choose the server which you want this domain to communicate with so in this situation the new server which i created that's wordpress ubuntu so see that host name is very useful in order to identify if you have like 10 or 12 or 15 different servers it would have been very difficult for you to identify the one which you just created so i created this one i choose this one and i say create record that's it now your domain in some time would be able to communicate with your web service so if you immediately go to let's say sharik.dev or whatever your domain is you would see google complaining about the domain but it would take some time for it to get started or for it to start working so once it starts working whatever the image you chose should be able to execute so in current situation i cannot have you waiting for i don't know an hour so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna pause the video i'm gonna resume it as soon as the changes are has taken effect and then we'll take you through the ending process of how it was um, supposed to be uh, working with our domain and we'll walk you possibly through some other services in another videos but in this video we will only discuss about droplets so i will be only discussing about it so let's see um i'll be back in an hour and let's see if it if it's um taking effect by then